Good afternoon, Lebanon area seniors. It's Rebecca from the Lebanon Senior Center, and we are going to be mixing up a batch of cookies today. I don't know what brings back more memories more for the Christmas season in my family than baking. Um, so many stories, so many goofy antics, so many shared experiences together in the kitchen or around the kitchen table, decorating cookies, packaging cookies, giving cookies out to family and friends. We are a bunch of cookie monsters at my house when it comes to Christmas time. And you know, there's nothing like getting into your recipe box or a recipe book and pulling out those tried and true family favorites. You know, the ones that are stained and beaten up on and look kind of horrendous. Um, <laughs> uh, and you know, even getting hard to read because the ink is um, getting smeared and drained off the page from getting wet for too many years. But you know what, we still go back to them because really we probably have a lot of the recipe memorized, but there's something about seeing a family member's handwriting or a really good family friend who passed that recipe on to you that you're sharing with your kids and you're sharing with maybe even your grandkids or great grandkids that really lets us connect to our roots and to our family, those still with us and those who have, who have passed on. And that's the birth of tradition right there, right? Passing those things on, sharing those memories, sharing those either customs, traditions, or foods with each other through the years. So that's some of the things that makes Christmas really special uh, for my family and probably yours as well. At least I hope so, because they're very precious. So this year, I think, um, we're all feeling a bit challenged uh, connecting with family and friends with the pandemic going on. But you know what? It's these recipes. It's these traditions. We can still do them. We might have to do them a little differently. But hey, if you've got your kitchen, you can break out those recipes. You can have a Zoom call. You can FaceTime family and friends while you're cooking in the kitchens, showing off what you're doing. Those are shared flavors you can taste across the miles when both households are cooking the same recipe, right? So this year, it's kind of exciting for me. I'm getting to use um, a very special sugar cookie recipe that was passed to me from one of my mamas from the heart. And uh, it's one that uh, all of the kids, all of the family friends were, you know, it doesn't, year doesn't go by without someone messaging and saying, hey, do you still have that recipe? And uh, I love getting to say, yes, yes, I do. And it's it's still the one in her handwriting. I refuse to let it go. And uh, I get to make up a bunch of these cookies and we're gonna be handing them out tomorrow at the Senior Center um, for those that signed up for our sugar cookie decorating kits. You're gonna be getting to have um, Grace's Sugar Cookies. That's the author of this recipe's name. Her name is Grace. Very special lady near and dear to my heart. So we're gonna get started on this recipe and I hope that while we're making these sugar cookies, you guys are inspired to do some baking. Um, that doesn't mean you have to eat them all, you know, share them with the family and friends. That's that's excellent, good thing to do. Um, don't get all sugar carb loaded on me. But uh, you know, if, if you really get stuck, you might have to leave a plate out for Santa and you know, help him eat them. You know, that's just the truth, right? So. For our sugar cookie recipe, we're gonna need some all-purpose flour. We're gonna need granulated sugar, some vanilla, uh, butter, a little bit of shortening, baking powder, a little salt, and some elbow grease. How does that go? Don't put the elbow grease in the bowl. All right, I like to use my mixer, so it's lovely and back here. So when I get noisy, I'll probably edit that out so you don't have to listen to it. It's it hard to hear me. Um, oh, and for those of you who don't know, I did the oh dear hat for you today. There you go. Oh, I was going to say, if you are baking for somebody else this year, uh, right now I don't have a mask on because it makes it hard um, for the audio to pick up sometimes. So the cookies you're going to watch me make are actually ones we're going to be keeping for my household. If you are baking treats for somebody else, just out of respect and to honor uh, other people's needs this year, definitely wear a mask, make sure you're washing those hands, make sure you've wiped down your kitchens and sanitized beforehand, just to take extra precautions, right? You wanna give love, you don't wanna get anybody sick. 
not this year or any year, right? That's just not the gift you want to keep on giving. So that said, we've got our bowl back here. I have my stand mixer up. We're going to start loading ingredients in. I am going to be doubling. My apologies. As I said, you know, we are a bunch of cookie monsters and actually getting a chance to get together with some of my kids this weekend. Um, we'll mask up and be really good. But there we go. So I'm doing a half a cup of shortening. It's really, it's a quarter cup of shortening, but I'm doing half. I will put the recipe down below with the appropriate increments for one batch. I'm going to need a half a cup of butter and margarine. Of course, that is usually one package and, well, you know, I can do the math. Doubling makes it two. There we go. So we've got our two sticks of margarine in there. We need, I always like to open a new stack of sugar over the sink because it never fails that sugar in the cracks and crevices of that sugar bag tends to explode everywhere at some point. All right. There we go. So our shortening and margarine are in the bowl. Now we need two cups of sugar. There's number one. Maybe. Oh, ha, ha, ha. There we go. There's number two. Some people think sugar cookies and they kind of go, there's only two cups of sugar. Well, when you frost sugar cookies, right? When you decorate them, that frosting is largely nothing but sugar. So it adds a lot more sweetness. So you don't want your sugar cookie hyper sugarfied to begin with. When it bakes up funny, but it also, uh, Gets me overload on sweetness at that point. So we've got our sugar in the bowl. Now we need some eggs. So I'm going to do the ever wise thing. I'm going to take a standard measuring cup here. And I've got some lovely brown eggs that came from my mom's farm. Check out those guys right there. So see, my mom's even cooking with me today. There we go one egg it's like doing this on camera is like a feels like it's a bit asking for one of these to explode in my hand but so far so good all right number three and number four there we go so we've got our four eggs and they go Wash just to make sure. You know, handling those eggs, got to be careful. All right, and our teaspoon of vanilla. A little heavy handed with the vanilla. I enjoy it. I like my cookies to have that vanilla flavor. I love the smell of that. All right, a couple of dry things here. So just a little bit of salt, a teaspoon of salt. Oh, it went the wrong direction. All right, there's one. I'm going to pour this other one over here. All right, got our two teaspoons of salt and our teaspoon of baking powder, which is, we're doubling it, going to be two. All right, I think that's just about everything. So we've got our shortener, our margarine, the sugar, our eggs, the vanilla, the baking powder, and the salt. Um, here, we have not opened that flour. Well, we're going to mix those other ingredients, get those well blended. Then we're going to start adding in our flour. 
So we'll be right back after we make some noise up in here. All right, so I did get the um, flour opened up. We got those original ingredients all mixed up in the bowl, and I've already started adding some flour. So I've almost got all of it in there. Just need to get the last cup. Um, so for a double batch, it's about five cups of flour. So you can do the math there. If you're making a single batch, it's gonna be about two and a half cups. So I'll do a little bit on that side. A little bit on that side, just kind of evenly distribute it there. Another quick mix around. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Don't want to overbeat it. Maybe off it comes. Wait. There it comes. All right, and that's our dough right there. Isn't that beautiful? Now you might be going, well, that looks really sticky, Rebecca. Well, it's true. It is kind of sticky. So an important step when making shaped cookie dough. So this can be for, you know, your gingerbread people or your sugar cookies. Um, anything that you're going to not just drop from a spoon practically is you want to chill it. Um, chilling it uh, cools that butter and those um, fats down, makes it so they are less sticky all on their own. But also they are easier to work with and hold their shape as they start to bake. Um, you got something too warm, it'll start spreading out in the oven, in the heat of the oven, and that's not great. You got all that work to make a pretty cookie. You want it to kind of stick with what you're working and shaping it to be, not having it turn into, you know, a blob. Of course, this year maybe you're making, you know, some COVID shaped cookies or something so people can take a bite out of COVID. Um, and I don't mean by getting the disease, I just mean knocking it out, right? If so, maybe you want a kind of a blobby shape on your tray. But if not, if you're going for those snowmen or those stars or those Christmas trees, then by all means, chill that dough down first. So I'm going to break this up into two balls and wrap it up in some plastic wrap and stick it in my fridge for about an hour. Okay, and that'll let it chill down nicely. And I'm going to get the oven preheating as that hour comes to a close. So I'll meet you back here in just a little bit with some chilled cookie dough. We'll roll it out and get it cut into shapes and we'll get it in the oven. And uh, that is going to be a 400 degree oven. So see you in just a few. All right. So we're back and we've let the dough chill in the fridge for a little bit, uh, about an hour. And um, prep my surface, make sure we were cleaned up after getting that dough made up. Um, I have a silicone mat, protects my countertops, uh, makes it easy to remove things from the counter, and my handy dandy rolling pin. I have a cool one that lets me adjust it to the thickness I want. And of course, I kept the flour out because we're gonna need some of that to sprinkle around to make sure our cookie dough doesn't stick. I have preheated the oven to a lovely 400 degrees. I don't think you can read that from back there. And then I have my cookie sheet ready to go. I like to put some parchment paper on them. Keeps things from sticking to the pan. Um, helps me control the browning on the bottom side of the cookies too. So that's definitely something you can look at doing. Oh, and selected my cookie cutter. For the sake of the moment, I've just got a little Christmas tree, hello, um, shaved cookie gutter for the moment. And I've got a, a little spatula. It's got a nice thin edge to it. Helps me to lift the cookies up off the counter to put on the cookie sheet. I'm going to put the dough off the side for just a second. As I said, we're going to sprinkle some flour down. Probably going to keep a little extra. 
here on the counter. Spread it around with my cookie cutter because it also helps get the cookie cutter nice and powdered up there. So, or floured up. So it doesn't stick to things. Notice I keep talking about sticking to things. Sugar cookies certainly do like to stick to things. All right. And my silicone mat likes to stick to the plastic wrap. <laughs> oh, if you're not combating one sticky situation, it's another. If uh, 2020 hasn't taught us that, I don't know what will. All right. As I was saying, you don't have to worry about getting that dough to where it's so not sticky when uh, before you stick it in the fridge because you're going to roll it through flour and be messing with it a little bit. So if you get it to where it's not sticky and easy to handle before it goes in the fridge, you run the risk of getting it over tough and it'll taste really kind of hard and pretty much tastes like flour, you know, which isn't exactly what you want your cookies to taste like. I'm going to find a good place to put my extra dough while I roll this one out. Come back and put a little more flour and I'm just rolling it out in different directions until I get it the thickness I want. There we go. I'm going to go with that. It's a little bit thinner than I want to do, but we're going to give that a shot. Of course, one of the best parts, the part that's fun to do with kids or your kid at heart. And just sit here and cut out those shapes, spacing them. So they don't necessarily touch, but you get some good distance between them. go. I always like to leave the shapes there and then I peel off the extra dough <laughs> add it back to my pile. Oh my teapot is trying to whistle at me on the stove and just with the edge of my Spatula, pick up the cookies. You can dust off any extra flour. It does come off um, as they bake as well. So don't get too excited about having to take all the dough up. So I keep that going. Get the cookie sheet completely, well, not completely filled. You want an inch or two between the cookies. They will puff up a little bit, but not too bad. Once you get them all set on your cookie sheet, you're going to put them in your oven again at 400 degrees. Depending on how big your cookie sheet is, honestly, time can vary a little bit. Go for about eight to 10 minutes. You want to take a peek. You still want them kind of like a blonde color. You're not looking for a golden brown. Um, it's that golden brown. It's just going to be slightly on the edge of the bottom. So that's what you're looking for. And uh, yeah, just give it eight to 10 minutes and then we'll take a peek at those cookies. So I took the batch of cookies out of the oven and we just need to let them cool. So there's what one of the sugar cookies looks like unfrosted. So if you've got a baking rack, I suggest you let them cool on the baking rack. So the bottom side doesn't uh, keep with the moisture. If you dry on a baking rack, the cookie will uh, cool off evenly and be evenly firm. Sometimes when they sit on a surface, some of the moisture from um, the cooling process kind of just hangs out under the cookie and that can make um, your sugar cookie a little flimsy, and especially if you're gonna frost them, you want them to be kind of solid. Now, when it comes to decorating a sugar cookie, it's probably the most fun. And it's, there's so many different ways to do it. One of our favorite ways, um, got a lot of females in my family, we like to dip them in chocolate. 
I melt a little chocolate on the stove in a double boiler or in the, some chocolate chips in the microwave, and you can dunk half the cookie in chocolate chips. You can still add sprinkles and things, but you get some nice chocolate on a cookie. It's delicious. And uh, another way, of course, if you're a buttercream frosting person, <laughs> you can make up your favorite buttercream frosting recipe and smother that on there. Buttercream's not our favorite because it's really hard to gift those. Buttercream, you know, stays kind of soft. We like to use an icing. We like to use uh, just pretty much a combination of uh, like two tablespoons of butter. Uh, oh, I want to say it's like two teaspoons of water. I have to look. Can you believe that? All right, two tablespoons of margarine, two tablespoons of water, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And you just warm in the microwave just for a few seconds, just till that butter gets melted in with the water. And then we add that to a bowl of about two cups of powdered sugar. And it makes this kind of nice smooth icing um, that you can kind of use the back of a spoon to spread around your cookie. It's a little too thin to pipe in a bag. Um, so we tend to frost with butter knives or offset spatulas or whatever we've got around the house and add our sprinkles and whatever fun things we want to the top of our cookies. The good thing about the icing is that it sets rather firmly. So we can package the cookies up and give them and they don't end up being like some multi-decker, double-decker, triple-decker sandwich cookie in the process. Um, the cookies are really great. We, if you want to save some for later, if you're shipping them or wrapping them as a gift in a gift package, we like to wrap them individually in just a little bit of wax paper, seal it with a little masking tape. Makes it a lot of fun. Keeps them nice and fresh. Can also store them in the freezer for a couple of months, which makes it nice. So while you're knocking out some Christmas cookies, uh, if you find you've made too many, you can do some heart shapes and save them for Valentine's Day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed making sugar cookies with us today and sharing in this family tradition. Uh, maybe in the comments below, you want to share your favorite Christmas cookie that you guys make. We can do an online cookie exchange here. We might not get to eat each other's cookies, but, you know, you'll get an idea of what other flavors of cookies are out there. Now, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. And I would love to see if you make some sugar cookies or your favorite cookies. Put some photos below. Make me hungry. All right. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And if you signed up for some sugar cookies tomorrow, I hope your mouth is watering because you get to decorate tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye from the Lebanon Senior Center.